Good morning, friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with 12 yokes of oxen. He was following the 12th. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and mother goodbye and I will follow you. Elijah answered, go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant the word of the Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Keep 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, Live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the days for Jesus' being taken up, taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. 
And to another he said, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus resolutely determined. He has his focus on getting to Jerusalem and to, and to fulfill his mission. And we see in the first reading the prophets where Elisha will take the place of Elijah. And Elijah is a, a true prophet because when Elisha comes to him, well, let me go say goodbye. And he said, what did I do to you? Because it's all God's work. And this is the key. Everything is God's initiative, God's work in our lives. And what does he do? He does exactly what Jesus says at the end. He's, got a, he's not he's at the plow, but he, he burns everything. He burns his bridges, so to speak. He cuts with the things that prevent him from being free, as St. Paul is speaking about in the second reading. We have a freedom that comes from God. And Jesus has this freedom to do as he's doing and not looking at human relationships, which St. Paul kind of ties with the, the desires of the flesh and not the desires of the spirit. Our fleshly relationships are very, how do you want to say it? They, they often get in the way of God. That we love our family more than we love God. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the priority is just that. Jesus' resolution is to fulfill the mission of the Father, to go to heaven, to bring us to heaven. To show one thing, what St. Paul speaks about, love. Love your neighbor as yourself. He's, his, his mission is one of love, and he wants to fulfill it because he loves us. They go through Samaria. Samaria are the, you could say, the, the people who have the mixed religion. Judaism and paganism mixed, and they're not pure in their Jewish beliefs. And so James and John, being good Jews, look at they're not paying attention to you, Lord. Let's send fire down from heaven. And Jesus says, you got it all wrong. I'm not here to do that. Sometimes we think being with Jesus, we have the right answers, we know better. And Jesus isn't afraid. Jesus has the freedom to rebuke them. And you know, if we've been rebuked in life, do we see it as a good thing, as a help to us? Or do we take it the wrong way and feel offended? Because sometimes love means we have to say the truth. And Jesus says the truth in him. I didn't come to destroy life. I came to, to save lives. And he came to save the Samaritans too. Then he continues. And then he continues to meet people along the way who, it's like Jesus is a rock star and they want to follow him. And he says, no. You know, foxes have dens and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He, he does lay his head somewhere on the cross where he'll fulfill his mission of love. But the beautiful word today is just that they, all the people that he encounters, he doesn't take his eyes off his mission of getting to Jerusalem and fulfilling it on the cross, showing the love that he has for the entire world to, to give us that real freedom, the freedom so that we can love, the freedom that we can also cut our bridges, like Elisha, the things that keep us enslaved, like St. Paul saying, we become slaves to everything but God. And the real freedom is to have God in our midst, in our lives. And Jesus is going to heaven through the cross. And he's opening heaven for us. And he's calling us along the way. Even what those who says, well, wait, let me bury my father. Or, or I have to say goodbye. He still says, follow me. And he's saying to you me today, follow me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, we bless you for your love for us, and we ask you now to listen to our prayers. For all those who have answered the call of Christ to become clergy and religious brothers and sisters, may their example of discipleship inspire the entire Church of God. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have answered the call of discipleship within Christian marriage, may the example of sacred marriage inspire the entire Church of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those called to the single life, may their commitment toward others in building the reign of God inspire the entire Church of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders, may they always seek the good of others and the well-being of society rather than power and wealth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are alone and forgotten, may our own discipleship lead us to encourage and comfort them in their need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have completed the journey of discipleship and now live for eternity with Christ, may their journey of love inspire us on our own journey to be joined with them in the reign of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, receive these and all the prayers of our hearts, which we offer here today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and we come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of, the, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Speak, Lord, I love to listen to your voice. See, Lord, here I am. My heart is silent, Lord, my soul is still, waiting upon your voice. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Blessed Good morning. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. Our broadcast cannot continue without your support. Please consider sending a donation to TV Mass at Post Office Box 588, Winona, Minnesota. Five five nine eight seven.